Ever since I started creating electronics videos, there's been one repetitive question. How did you make the LED sign in your intro? And the answer is super simple. Dozens of LEDs soldered in parallel and powered by a constant voltage source. But since that is too easy and even a bit boring for an electronics project video, I will now show you how I created a new LED sign that features a volume unit or VU meter circuit that lights up the LEDs in correspondence with the loudness of the music. Let's get started. First off, we are going to need the LED sign itself. For that, I used the software Lochmaster with a strip or template to create my initial design by placing 73 green LEDs on the board to form the word music. Then I printed it out, gathered my LEDs and started placing them on the board in order to write the first letter. Make sure though that the anodes and cathodes all face the same direction. In my case, the anodes face upwards. To solder them in place, I simply bent the leads and after soldering, snipped them off. But since this tactic does not fix the LEDs in their designated spot very well, I heated up the solder afterwards once again and pushed a bit from the other side. This way, the results look pretty decent. I then repeated this process for every one of the remaining four ladders, which took about half an hour. Afterwards, I got myself 0.8mm silvered copper wire, straightened it out with the help of two pliers and formed six bridges, which jump across two holes of the strip boards. I used those around the ladder eye to connect all the anodes of each row together in order to create a so-called common anode. At the end, I soldered a wire to each cathode line and one extra wire to the common anodes. And the LED sign is complete! I tested it out by applying the forward voltage of this LED type to the common anode and each cathode line. And it all seems to work without a problem, so we can move on to the control electronics. This is the schematic that I came up with. Looks confusing at first, but let me explain. The main input signal will be the AC voltage of a 3.5mm jack, which produces maximum voltage peaks of around 1.3 volts. That is quite low if we want to distinguish them between 7 threshold values for the 7 rows of the LED sign. That is why the signal gets amplified with a non-inverting op-amp configuration after being mixed together to mono signal and amplitude fine adjusted by a potentiometer. What we want in the end are peaks of around 8 volts in the amplified audio signal. This way, we can build up 7 comparator op-amp configurations which will turn on its outputs when the voltage of the plus inputs, aka the audio signal, is higher than the voltage of the minus inputs, aka the reference voltage. And by creating reference voltages from 1 to 7 volts with the help of voltage dividers, we successfully differentiated between the volume levels, also known as the voltage amplitudes of the music. Those output voltage bursts can then be connected to the gate of 7 RFD 220 N channel MOSFETs, which finally turn on and off the individual rows of the LED sign. I only build up the circuits for the upper 3 rows 7, 6 and 5 volt on the breadboards, but nevertheless it demonstrates the principle pretty well. So I gathered all the parts I need for the complete control circuits and started by soldering the audio and TC jack to the left side of the board. According to the schematic, I then added the mixing resistors, the potentiometer, two 4 pin IC sockets for each quad op and by C, the MOSFETs with pull down resistors, and finally all the resistors to set the amplification factor and creating the reference voltages. While creating the circuits, I try to use silver copper wire as often as possible to keep the layout neatly arranged. But in the end, I was forced to use a bit of flexible wire to hook up the op-amp outputs to the gate of the MOSFETs. And after 2 hours of soldering, it was time for the first test. So I connected a 12 volt power supply to measure the voltage at the ICs and the reference voltages. And used my oscilloscope to verify a successful amplification of my audio signal. Afterwards, I mounted a buck converter to the board, hooked it up to the 12 volt power line, set its output voltage slightly higher than the forward voltage of my LEDs, connected the positive output to the common anodes and the cathode lines to the drain of the corresponding MOSFETs. 
Then I drill 3mm holes in each corner of the two boards, use 20mm spacers and M3 bolts to join them together and the project was complete. With the help of the potentiometer, the circuit can be adjusted to pretty much every audio signal and of course it does look awesome, especially with the lights out. I hope you like this project and if you want to build something similar, you can find all the necessary information in the video description. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe, that would be awesome. Consider supporting me through Patreon in order to keep such videos coming. Stay creative and I will see you next time.